Welcome back to Thies Dinham. It's a glorious late March day. The sun is shining, the sky is blue, and I'm here in a pool of absolute sunshine. They've probably been here for a hundred years or so. These are all the Narcissus, subspecies Pseudo-Narcissus. It's what we would call the sort of native daffodil, and it does incredibly well in Wales. They would originally have come from the Mediterranean, but they absolutely love the conditions that we have here. And Wales is a, a really good place to be growing daffodils. And to me, the way that they come out at this time of year, when we've had the period of darkness and the evenings have been so dark and dreary, and we get to the spring equinox, which was yesterday, and all of a sudden there's just there's this amazing amount of yellow everywhere. It's this, the colour of sunshine, it's the colour of spring, and it's showing that nature is moving on to the rest of the year and that things are really starting to get going. We've got the yellow in the daffodils, we've got the yellow in the trees, we've got the Lysochiton americanus that's down there by the swamp area. Um, we have the celandines out in the hedgerows, we've got the dandelions out in the hedgerows. Yellow is the colour and it's not only important for wildlife, it is also really important for us as human beings. It's such a, a vibrant, uplifting colour to have at this time of year and it really lifts your spirits as we go into the real growing season. One of the most common questions they get asked uh, about daffodils is the question of blindness. And you can see a fantastic patch of it here. The main problems you've got with daffodils not flowering are if they are congested, if they're too dry. Uh, so if you've got somewhere that's really baking, they're not gonna like that. That's why they do so well in Wales. We have a reliable source of moisture, ma mainly all year round. They can also be affected by being planted too shallowly. They need a good, depth you would generally go something like six inches it's got to be two to three times the size of the bulb so make sure if you are digging them up you replant them nice and deep a bit of organic matter make sure they're not going to be waterlogged because that's a surefire way of, of losing your daffodils they hate being waterlogged and then just make sure that they're not going to dry out too much another important point is that we never strim any of this down tie up the leaves you should always allow the leaves to die back naturally because all of this is photosynthesizing and providing energy to the bulbs. So you want that and you want them to do that for as long as they possibly can and then die back naturally. Once they've gone yellow, then we clear uh, the tops off and, and that's fine. The, the bulb has stopped growing then and it's stopped taking all that energy back into itself. So this would be the naturalised Welsh daffodil, which is the Narcissus subspecies Pseudo-Narcissus. It's one of these plants that has come over hundreds of years ago from the Mediterranean and it's just loved our conditions here and has become what is known as naturalised. And another one of its common names is the Lenten lily, indicating its period of flowering sort of around the Lenten time, around Easter. Um, of course, it's not a lily, it's actually from the Amaryllis family. I've got the two main examples of it here. This is the one that you will generally see, and you can see that it's quite diminutive. It's a little small daffodil, it's a delicate daffodil, little green leaves, the nodding heads, and it has this amazing twisted petal that almost sort of corkscrews round. Beautiful muted colours as well. You can see here it's not a strident yellow, it's not a strident orange. It's those sort of like creamy ivory uh, and yellow tints. But what we also have growing here is the double form and this goes back from, it's a sport from the original native species. So this will occur naturally, but you don't see it very often. And so this one would have been known as Pseudonarcissus telemonius planus, or it's the Flore pleno, it's a double daffodil. And um, the trumpet has absolutely become packed with petals, and a lot of them have this lovely sort of green tinge to them. And they will fit into any sort of scheme that you've got, but they are perfect for naturalizing in grass. Uh, 
Um, obviously there's a quite a long season of daffodils and you can have the very early varieties and then they go all the way through to um, the late ones which tend to be the Poeticus uh, Actea types. What most people might be used to are things like this one which is the little tete-a-tete. -tete. This is a really nice early variety and you can see the scale of it. It is absolutely, it's like a little jewel. Um, now that's an early variety and if we're talking about the scale for planting this would be amazing in pots, um, in rockeries uh, and in areas where you can really get to see the detail. It's just a tiny miniature version of what we would, we would see as a, a normal full-size daffodil. You then go up to the other extreme which would be something like this which you see which might be harder to place in your garden. It's definitely more of a statement and these would be the more mid-season varieties like King Alfred. Um, you have much bigger leaves, a much bigger stem, but uh, for sort of floral flower power that would be amazing. So this one here that I've got here at the moment, this is Jetfire which might not be one that you've come across but I really appreciate this one. It's it's a really good doer. It's bulked up tremendously, has this lovely, strong, absolutely egg yolk trumpet. And the petals are reflexed back because it's a cyclaminous, um, from the cyclaminous group. And it looks like it's sort of like leaning into the wind slightly. I think what's lovely in this little grouping here is the contrast between the bright yellows of the jet fire and this amazing blue behind me. This is the China Doxa or Glory of the Snow and it's absolutely opened up in this sunshine and the bees are really enjoying it. But it's this lovely um, opposite colours now with the, with the yellow and the blue. It really makes this little area sing. The origin of the daffodil's Latin name Narcissus is quite interesting. It comes from the Greek mythology about the youth Narcissus who was so in love with his own reflection that he would gaze upon himself for hours on end in, in a pool in the woods uh, and eventually fell in and drowned and the gods tried to save him by turning him into a daffodil. And Virgil actually says that this is why we have this lovely trumpet in the middle of the daffodil. This is to catch the tears that Narcissus shed as he looked at himself in the reflect, his reflection in the water. It's just fascinating the amount of history that's, that's behind just a simple thing like the Narcissus. Daffodils can flower for 50 years. I mean, they really are and amazing, you get an awful lot of flower for your money if you're gonna buy daffodils. They also, they don't get eaten by uh, rabbits, squirrels don't like them. They have alkaloids inside the bulb and in the leaves which put off predators from eating them. So, I mean, they're just such an amazing doer in the garden.